Yeah, I lived in Newtonville, which was like on, oh, yeah. right along the highway. Mm -hmm. And uh, right next to Nonantum, which was all those Irish and, and mm -hmm. Italian kids. And so that's who I went to junior high school with and mostly high school. But there was uh, a lot of really terrifying kids. There's a lot of scary kids. Well, um, blue-collar communities. Like, I was in Upper Falls. Yeah. In Newton, Upper Falls. There was a lot of fucking... A lot of drinking. And yeah. So they were, everybody would hang out by Echo Bridge. You right. remember Echo Bridge? Yeah, sure. That's where my house was. Okay. My house was right next to Echo Bridge. Yeah, Newton had a lot of hang. Like Cabot, I went to Cabot School, elementary school, and Cabot Park was a hang. Mm -hmm. And to cross Cabot Park, sometimes you'd get these guys that would just converge on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they would play games with you. And you didn't know what was going on. Right. Hey, kid, come here, come here. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of the park and you're like, fuck. Yeah. I remember once this kid, he said he, he had a $100 bill for some reason. And he said, we're, we're going to play this game. And they're all surrounding me. And he puts the $100 bill on my, on my hand and he gives me a cigarette. And he says, if you can burn a hole in his head all the way through, I'll give you the $100 bill. I'm Whoa. like, and I was like, I don't want to do it. Like, Jesus Christ. No, try it. Try it. And I was trying to do it and it hurt like fuck and i don't remember how that ended like i just remember that terrifying and they're all staring at me and one time some kids had a uh, a cup of puke it was like a <laughs> coffee cup <laughs> with puke and he said can you drink this whole thing uh, if you drink this whole thing we'll give you a beer that was that thing oh god <laughs> drink and these the guys puke and i'll give you a beer yeah these guys <laughs> just scared me and then when I grew up, I hung out with those kids and would smoke cigarettes. That's where I learned to smoke cigarettes in that park. And oh, I drank wow. my first beer in that park. Uh, but there was kids. There was a kid named Mike who was the toughest kid in Newton. He was just a fucking terrifying person. And there was one point where okay, the, so this kid named David Russell, he was his family lived in Boston. Remember, I don't know if you guys had Metco kids, the, the kids that were bused from yes. Boston into our schools. Yeah. Black kids from, all black kids from Boston who were bused into our school system. It wasn't part of that bus, bossing Boston thing. It was out to the suburbs. Right. And these were kids that got up at four o'clock in the morning to go to school. You know, they were living a particular life and coming <clears> out to this suburb. And some of them were my friends. One of them was Ronnie DeVoe of uh, Belle Biv DeVoe. No shit. Yeah, I went to high school with him. Wow. And uh, I knew him since like junior high school through high school. He was a nice kid. And when he was in what you, the first edition or new, new edition, mm -hmm. they used to come get him in a limousine. <clears throat> and people would say, shout racist shit at the Bobby Brown. All these guys would be in the limousine. And, in high school? It was so racist. <laughs> it was so crazy. Yes. Whoa. So... David Russell was a Medco kid, and his family's house burnt down in Boston. And a family in Newton, actually friends of mine, they had a rental unit, and they let the Russells live there. So it was like there's a black family living in Newtonville. It's a big deal. And everyone was into because it was all liberal teachers. Everybody was into, like, we're hosting this family because they lost their home. So all of a sudden, David Russell's living in Newton. He's not just going to school there. And one day... Um, Mike and his group confront David Russell in the park, and they go, hey, listen, we, we're really happy you're here. We want to show you this bench right here. This is your bench. And they had literally painted it black, and they painted one of the swings black. They said, this is the Russell swing. This is the Russell bench. You can use them any time you want. Whoa. And I remember I heard that story, and I went to the park that day, and it was a black bench and a black swing. <laughs> and they were there. I mean, I remember I went back when I was in my 20s, and it was still a little kind black. Of black. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was Newton, Massachusetts. <laughs> it's crazy. Kids were latchkey kids back then. Yeah. Remember those days you were just like. Oh, your parents were. They work. just let you out. There's no parents. Yeah. They come home. My mom would come. I was raised by a single mom. She had four kids and worked. So she'd come home at 7.30, 8 o'clock, rush hour traffic. Just exhausted. Yeah. And but I'd come home make my own lunch and often yep. dinner. Yep. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'd make something for my mom. You know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. A home alone all day. All, all day. day. Yep. Yeah. We out on a... the streets. Out on the streets. Nobody knew where you were. There was no cell phones. You just wandered around. Yep. And just hope you didn't die. Yeah. Because every now and then someone would die. Someone yeah, would die kids in a would drunk die. driving accident yes. or something. Every yeah. I think every year in my in uh, my high school, there would be a page in the mm -hmm. yearbook for the kid that got killed in a yeah, drunk driving. Yeah, something. There was always something like that. My friend's sister, my best friend Ian, his sister Claire, 
was in a drunk driving accident where somebody died and half her face was paralyzed still today. She was just, uh, uh, yeah, it was a fucked up, uh, fucked up time. Well, it's just those, I mean, the, getting through that though is like a very unusual education in, mm -hmm. in human beings and, and development and like why people do the things they do and why they say the things they do and why they're, they're trying out different kinds of behaviors yeah. and, you know, and, and bullies and people are pacifists and people yeah. get bullied and you see it ruin their lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can ruin your fucking life, man. I've, I've, I really feel for people who get bullied because if you get bullied in high school and you just decide that's who I am, I'm just this fucking loser, I'm just going to hide. Mm -hmm. And then you hide in your apartment and you hide in your house and you hide at your job and then like your life is hiding now because somebody fucked with you and somebody... Well, so you were very badly hurt when you yeah. were extremely vulnerable. Exactly. And you're probably hurt because you already were vulnerable. You are already were right. uh, unsure of yourself for so it's ultra a million devastating. different reasons. Yeah. And so you never really recover from that, I don't think. It's, it's, you can. it's part, I mean, it, it doesn't mean it destroys your life, but it's in your life. All, yeah. the things it's, all the things that happen to you that are horrible, like unbelievable, they just stay with you. They just become part of you. You don't yeah. swap it out. You don't, you don't clean it out. It you doesn't don't go away, clean it just it stays out, but in you, you. You can get over it. You can get over it. You can integrate it. Yeah. It can help you understand what's happening to other people. It can help you even understand people that hurt people. Yeah. Like when you get really hurt by people, you have two choices. You can decide to collapse under it and say, I'm too weak to live in this world. Or you can decide to hate them, which is another very corrosive thing. Mm. You can just decide that they are shit. They're not human. Or you can look at them and go, what the fuck did this person right. do this to me? And They've always you, been abused. Yeah, and then you go, okay. And then you get an insight that no people don't get without that kind of yeah. experience. And uh, and then you have a self-reliance because you go, I got through it. I did it. I got through it. Um, I think every extreme experience, bad and good, is food you know it's good it has food. it has the potential for a learning experience yeah yeah potential yeah it's yeah. up to you it's, it's up totally to you when you turn you. it into yeah like uh, all those stories about like me being bullied and thrown around like that's what led me to get into martial arts if it wasn't yeah. for that i probably ne never would have done it and i never right. would have been the person that i am sure but all that came out of bad feelings like terrible yeah. feel like just moving to town so i was mm -hmm. 14 i just moved there um, I, I lived in Jamaica Plain before that, and then we moved. Oh, to, I didn't uh, know that. In, yeah. Well, how old were you when you moved from there? Uh, we were. I lived in Jamaica Plain for, I guess, a year and a half or so. My parents were like, "This is way too dangerous. We got to get yeah, out of there." Still, yeah. probably. <laughs> it was sketchy. 